They have the anniversary. They have the 120 heritage. Look at that. That's pretty. Atova so There's the 2023. Sold. What's up? You want to pee? <laughs> that opens up. So I just got off riding that bike. One thing I like to do when I go to a new destination, ever since I started, uh, you know, this YouTube journey of mine, is to go to a Harley dealership. So, finally made it to Harley Davidson in Tokyo. Nice little sidecar here. Ultra classic. Sport glide that threw me off for a second. Look at that road king. There's a 2023 sold sport glide Indian session. We don't we don't say the Indian word over here, okay? <laughs> we don't use that word here. She, my daughter's like, what's the other company's name? No, you don't say Indian over here. So they do carry the sport glide 2023. That's something that's a model we don't see in America. And it's 22,700. Let me translate that for you. 22,800. 28, $21,000. $21,000. $21, Here's the heritage, the heritage that I had, that I had in Daytona. Pretty cool. They want 3,200 for it, which is around 20, $23,000. And they have the breakout. Is this the Robert Simmons color? I don't remember. I think it is. The 117. It's pretty nice, actually. 3.3, 3,300. So that is $24,000. I'm not sure how much it's uh, in the States. They have the anniversary. They have the 120th anniversary heritage. Look at that, that's pretty. That's really nice. I've seen it in person. It's really, really cool. Wow. Zit, Kenze, so limited edition. So it's, uh, if this is the main dealership, it's, it's a small dealership. Not a lot of bikes on, the, on display. Um, let's go see some merch. Where's the road glide here? I don't see a road glide. I see straight glides. Maybe I'll get myself a hat. How about a t-shirt? Let's see how about a t-shirt. gonna pick up some gloves these are nice gloves they go well with my uh my flannel so i was like try them on but this is a bit pricey i think eighteen thousand yen it's around 160 150 dollars slightly overpriced guys i found the treasure there you go i'm gonna pick some up so you guys Whoever collects, I have one. I'm gonna have some uh, from Tokyo on my website. So. One of each color. So this is funny. We're we're both at uh, we're both at uh, Harley in Tokyo, and what's your name? Thomas. Thomas walks up to me and says, "You're Holy Shift, yeah." He's from Finland. Yes. And he rides a uh, lowrider S. Yeah. 
and a fat uh, fat boy, fat seven. boy, and a Kawas <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And cool, cool meeting you. He's going on a six-day trip over here, so yes. it's gonna be. That was pretty cool. It's a small, it's a small store, a small shop over here, and uh, they got the usual bikes. Oh, and this bike, I remember Mo uh, Monkey. Monkey was here about a month ago. Professional Monkey was here, and he was excited about this bike. And it looks pretty good. It looks like it's being used. It's a small dealership. I mean, it's not the dealerships we're used to seeing. Uh, in the States over here a small dealership. It's got a lot of motorcycles Not all models obviously I couldn't I didn't see even one road glide. I just saw one screen glide I saw a few lowrider STs. Oh, I did see a sport glide. They have they still sell sport glides outside of the States I didn't know that and the prices prices were maybe 10 20 percent more expensive than the states which is understandable maybe because it's you know an, an import so i'm waiting my uh with my bike over here on the lift to be serviced and uh brendan from bmg the owner says to me hey what are you doing you gotta wait for a few hours over here you want to ride anything to do some content i said yeah sure he says go choose what bike you want so i just got off riding that bike while my uh, Royal Enfield Classic 350 Signals was serviced, uh, that's going to be a separate video. I took out the Rocket, the Rocket 3 for a, for a ride, test ride. Boy, that was, that was fun. I'm going to ride back home now and check out the video. Uh, this Triumph Rocket is amazing. BMG were nice and gave me, uh, let me ride it. I took it out for an hour and it was, boy, was it fun. I'm going to ride back home now, continue my story about Japan. So I just finished up, just finished up over here at BMG, had the Royal Enfield service. They did a valve adjustment, you know, first oil change, first uh, service, it's a bigger service, make sure everything is okay, no leaks, all bolts torqued to spec and everything. So next, uh, next service I'm going to do by myself. So let me just continue uh we're so interesting in japan one of them is there and this is something i've heard already in the past is how they respect or how much attention they put into uh the bathroom the the restroom the toilets and literally the, I, i've heard in the past people uh, stories that they have little like little radios where by the toilet uh, paper dispenser so they click a button and it makes noise to, so they don't you don't hear well uh, you don't hear when somebody drops drops a little nugget <laughs> and uh my experience over there was like uh, the the toilet seat was heated and it had uh like this uh control panel that i mean the room the room we got is just unbelievable the highest uh like the highest uh top star five star even more amazing walk in everything so but the thing that was really coolest look at this We're ready for this experience ready for this bathroom the bathroom welcomes you and it's apparently it's a cultural thing in japan for the longest time they had utter respect the the most the highest respect for their uh, bowel movements for sitting in the bathroom in the toilet take a look at this you walk in and it's every pretty much every bathroom that you walk you just walk in and the bathroom and the toilet just greets you opens up hello toilet how you doing so the funniest thing is that the first day i was literally sitting i couldn't figure out they have this control control module over here that uh, pretty much does everything and everything comes from the bottle bottom it's all uh, electronically controlled and stuff like that and first day I just sat down, I couldn't read uh, what it said. So I sat down, the minute you sat, uh, sit down, it starts uh, a vent and you have all possible uh, like options over here. You have a uh, flush, obviously one flush. There you go. The toilet is being flushed right now. Then you have a light, light flush, okay? Which is like a half a flush. Oscillate, pulse, I don't know, but this is if you want to if you want to pee the opens up if you want to pee 
<laughs> that opens up. Okay, you're done. Your wife won't yell at you. So you click this and it goes down. There you go. How about that? Now, once you're done, uh, it has this magic wand that comes out of the bottom. And this is where I had the biggest problems is you, I hope it's not going to squirt all over the place, but I couldn't, initially I couldn't find the stop button. That's the most important button because when you click this, it's not going to work if you don't sit down. The, the actual toilet seat is heated. So you sit down, it's a nice, comfortable temperature. When you're done, done doing your business, you click this and there's a water, a water fountain coming from the bottom, squirting up at your, at your anal and you have different different kinds of squirts. I'll make a stronger stream of pressure of water, lower, and you can move it forward all the way to uh, to, your, to your ball sack and all the way back. And then when you're done, you click air, and the whole thing uh, starts some warm air coming up and drying you drying you up. A really interesting experience. The first day that I used the toilet, I started the. The, the water pressure, and I just couldn't figure out where, where to stop it. I was clicking every possible button, and the squirt was going back and forth and stuff and up and down, and it was the funniest thing. So it's apparently, it's a very, uh, it's a thing. It's a really a, a big thing in, uh, in Japan. Everywhere you go, it doesn't matter if it's a five-star hotel or even a one-star hotel, they have their own ele electrically uh, bidet, you know? And it's, I got news for you, for three nights that we're here, four days, three people using the bathroom a lot, but you used only a quarter of a toilet, a quarter of a roll of toilet paper. So, and it's actually pretty funny and pretty cool actually, but it's something about this culture that is so different than ours. Another cool thing that uh, the Japanese really love is vending machines pretty much everywhere you go there's a vending machine uh, but a vending machine for anything drinks snacks hot drinks cold drinks and yeah literally got hot coffee from a vending machine that was in a in a like a soda can take a look vending automatic vending machines everywhere for food for beverages so we're gonna have some hot coffee right here get a hot coffee from the machine Hot? Oh, it is hot. Oh my God. Okay, guys, let's have let's have some coffee from uh, from a tin can. No milk. It's black coffee, but it's not bad actually. It's not bad at all. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> actually, half too hot to hold. <laughs> black coffee. Yes, name them. Ah, have with milk. I didn't see. What do they have with vanilla uh, almond milk? <laughs> There's one thing else they're, they're really, uh, and they really love is, is toys. They love these toys and gadgets and stuff like that. And they just, there was a store we went to that was filled with little vending machines where you put coins in and you get little surprise toys and just like the silliest things, the silliest items. And, and and every the people love it, just love it. And it's not only kids, it's adults. They just get so excited when they get, it's, it's the funniest thing. We're at a store, a vending machine store. I don't clue, my kids, uh, Sean says it's a, it's a store. If you buy stuff, you can get a little, Doll. <laughs> and, and a big doll. And another doll. Oh, a Sesame Street doll. And this is a, in the middle of Shibuya, one of the busiest centers in uh, Tokyo. Now oh, the banana. A folding, squeezable banana. And it's not for, it's not a kid's it's not a kid's shop. It's like an adult shop where you buy yourself a squeeze squeezable banana. <laughs> now, a, gonna get? a squeezable uh, hamburger. Oh, and fries. Oh, look what Sean got. She got, 
chicken nuggets some and some ketchup. <laughs> That's for grown-ups. Okay, you want a, you want a little chair and a table. Old. That's what I always wanted. I really always wanted that. Oh, and he got himself some nice cool stuff. They're happy they got a nice little li nice little gift. What do you get over here? <laughs> Characters. This is a bag. A shopping bag. Uh, shopping bag. How about the uh, rubber rubber gyoza? Rubber gyoza sounds like really cool. It's a cultural thing, guys. It's a cultural thing. First time for me. It's kind of interesting. How about some mini Lipton tea? You want mini Lipton tea? Compare that to my finger. Mini rubber uh, ramen and gyoza. <laughs> Oh, how about a chainsaw? <laughs> a, a rubber chainsaw. Here's your best oh one. God. A perfect muscle chopstick uh, holder. <laughs> Trying to figure out which one we're gonna take. We have to find the most ridiculous one. And they're all in the category already. You gotta find the best, the best one. The most ridiculous one. Do you guys want rubberized deli meat? Cold cuts. These are really cold. We got slushy, rubberized plastic slushy. I'm sure you need your own turnstile. Just get it here. Okay, we found the perfect item that I was dreaming of this whole time. It's called an Icoman Tatamel bike. It's a foldable plastic bike and we're gonna get it right now come on sean hurry up man i hope for the red oh, one. Oh man oh i hope for the red bike a red tata male bike oh it's a puzzle okay. ay, ay, ay. we'll do it at the hotel <laughs> we'll have to build it later at the hotel it's this place is just like in fort when forrest gump said this place is like a box of chocolate you never know what you get inside that's a good example Oh, wow. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> we actually did get the mystery one. Hey, good morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor? Mission half complete. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna continue. Too much time to waste. When you got all this to see, motorized little suitcases done is complete. Huh? Look at this. Genius folding suitcase motorcycle plastic thing that only cost me two and a half dollars in the Japanese Ooh. slot machine chewing gum dispenser thing i think um i watched monkeys pro monkeys video from like two months ago when he visited japan on work and he went to one of these one of these stores it's the funniest thing and it's exactly the, how he described it that's how i felt it's like I, I had to take i had to get something out of the machine and just it was so much fun now for the longest time it was known that Japan is extremely, extremely uh, expensive. That's what I've always known. Let me tell you from my experience, maybe in the past, it was very expensive to travel. But when we were there, we noticed that pretty much uh, every day, everyday life, food, it was uh, pretty much like half half the price of what the of the food is in america and is in the states uh, public transportation was a dollar a dollar 25 for a in in a, like in a local in the town commute so i think in new york city it's 225 so it was pretty much also half the price gas prices i don't know i did see uh like i said the harley and it was uh, 20 percent more expensive than the harley in the states one thing i do know that is uh, pretty expensive that is hotels and housing hotels are very expensive now where i stayed 
uh, pretty much it was uh, from the airline. We stayed in a five-star plus hotel. Extremely fancy, very, very luxurious hotel I've ever stayed in. And it was like breathtaking. We were on the 50, 52nd floor. A beautiful view to the, you know, to the whole, whole city. Everything was so clean and really tastefully designed and uh, really nice. A uh, hotel over there in the place where we stayed in that room is $600 a night. So that is a, that is a pricey hotel. Now, I'm sure my airline isn't paying $600 a night and they probably got some deal, but but any other uh, hotel is also, it's probably double the price of what it is in uh, New York. Accommodation, rooming, hotels is uh, pretty expensive. But otherwise, my daughter traveled uh, in Japan with her boyfriend for almost three weeks camping. And they said it was, it was not expensive. Like I said, food wasn't expensive. And they got themselves like a, a two week pass for the trains, which cost around 400 or $500. And it was unlimited passage, traveled and used the trains all over Japan. Uh, to pitch a tent at a local, you know, nice uh, campsite, it's $10 a night per person. So it was like $20 for both of them to pitch a tent, to pitch up their tent, which is not bad so it's uh, absolutely manageable as I said Tokyo itself is a uh, is a built-up city pretty much but you do get to see every uh, every so often a little uh, area where they have like a temple a pagoda a temple shrine with uh, a few gardens around them so as we were walking one of the days uh, we went to see they had a like a a samurai parade. The samurai fair over here. <laughs> kind of old dudes at this stage. I don't know if they're modern day samurais. But it's pretty cool to see them in traditional uh, outfits with their swords, the katanas, and pretty cool. That's about it guys. Had my bike serviced, did a test ride on the Triumph Rocket 3R which was a blast. I had a great time with my uh, daughter. We flew back to Israel. I stayed one night over there and uh, flew back home. Just hope you enjoyed this little uh, tour of Japan. I'm Sandy and you are, oh, that's a nice car. That is a nice car, I love that. Uh, that new style of uh, small pickup trucks. I'm Sandy, watching Holy Shift, guys. Till the next video, peace out.